So a few weeks ago, I went to the 24 Hours of Daytona and I was shooting a ton of photos, a ton of videos, um, and I was shooting a lot of them at night. If you haven't seen the video that I posted about the 24 Hours of Daytona, go ahead and check it out. That that you're seeing on the screen back there is actually part of that video. Um, so if you want to kind of see what the experience was like at 24 Hours of Daytona, go ahead and check out that video. I'll put a link in the description down below. But while I was there shooting at night, one of the things that I was leaning on really heavily to try to help get myself a good exposure is the histogram tool. It's a tool that can often be a bit overlooked, especially when you're actively shooting the photos. Now histograms are used a lot when in the post-production process, when you're editing photos, when you're editing or color grading videos, but they can be an extremely helpful tool when you're actually shooting photos, especially when you're shooting in challenging light environments. So today what we're gonna talk about is how to use and how to read the histogram tool, not just when you're editing the photos, but when you're actually taking the photos themselves and how to use it in any situation to get yourself a good exposure. This is episode three of Quick Tips, how to use the histogram in five minutes or less. All right, let's get a timer started now. So first of all, what is a histogram? Well, a histogram isn't just a photography tool. It's actually something that's used pretty widely in data analytics. A histogram is simply a chart that shows the frequency of distributions. In photography, the histogram shows on one axis the various colors in an image, and then on the other axis shows the frequency or intensity of which they appear. So on the horizontal axis, you have the tones of your image, or basically going from left to right, you've got your dark tones or shadows on the left-hand side, you have your mid-tones right in the middle, and you have your highlights or bright areas of your image on the very right-hand side. So basically, going from left to right, you have absolute black to absolute white. On the vertical axis, you have the frequency or the intensity of the tones that appear in your image. And we'll kind of talk about how to read this graph very quickly and understand what that means for your exposure here in a moment. So let's take a look at some examples and learn how to read the histogram graph. First, let's take a look at an example of an extremely overexposed image. In this example, because the image is wildly overexposed, you see that there is a huge concentration of the vertical bars towards the right side of the graph that represents the highlights and the bright tones of your image. As you start looking a little bit further left, it starts to drop off very quickly because it's so overexposed that we've lost a lot of our mid-tones and we don't really have any dark tones. You can also notice how tall the bars are on the bright side of the graph because of how bright those values are. Next, let's look at an example of an underexposed image. Just taking a look at this image, you can immediately tell it's underexposed, but if we didn't have the ability to see this image as a reference, we can take a look at the histogram and see that there is an overwhelming concentration of bars at the left side of the horizontal axis and all of the bars that are concentrated on the dark area of the graph are much higher than anything that exists on the mid-tones or bright areas of the graph, if anything. Now let's take a look at an example of what we would call an evenly exposed picture. If you take a look at this histogram, the bars are very evenly distributed across the entire horizontal axis. Of course, it's going to fall off a little bit on either end because we're capturing a majority of just mid-tones in the image. But you can also notice that of all of the bars, the height is not drastically more than the other. It creates a relatively flat line across the graph because all of the values are very even compared to the other values. This means we're capturing a a lot more color information and a lot more information in the image than we are when we overexpose or underexpose an image. But if you notice, this evenly exposed image still has a bit of a curve. It's not just a flat line across the entire graph. Realistically, we don't want to capture just a completely flat and completely even image. In order for us to have some kind of creativity in our image, a lot of times we are going to have to capture maybe some brighter areas and some darker areas. When we edit it, we might 
might have to edit it to be a little bit darker or brighter depending on the effect that we want to achieve. But when you're shooting in tough lighting situations, you can always lean on the histogram to tell you how evenly exposed your image is. An image that looks good when you're looking at the viewfinder or when you're looking at your camera screen might not look very good when you bring it up on a computer because it might have been an underexposed or it might have been overexposed, but you didn't notice because you're just looking at that tiny screen on your camera. So how do we use the histogram? Well, like any other tool in photography, it's not something that you should focus solely on. The exposure of our image is just one element of what makes a good or visually appealing image. You also have to take into consideration composition, if there's motion, if there's a certain feeling that you want to achieve. Not every single photo and not every single composition is going to be fitting of getting a fully even exposure. But knowing how to read a histogram and knowing when your image is overexposed and when it's underexposed can help you intentionally use those tools to get the exposure that you want. What utilizing the histogram can help you do is is when you are unsure of what exposure you're getting, you can use the histogram to understand how distributed the exposure of your image is. And you can use that to achieve the look that you want. So there you have it. That is everything you need to know about histograms in five minutes or less. Obviously with this series, we can't go into a ton of detail. So if you want to see more in-depth videos on these photography basics and photography tips, make sure you hit that like button and leave a comment down below with what you would like to see because these videos are designed for people that just want to have a quick rundown on how to get started and how to start using these basic tools. If there's anything else that you would like to see in this quick tip series, make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know what that is. If you found this video helpful and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and get that notifications on so you can know when new videos come out. All right, everyone. I'll see you on the next one.